anxiety, neurotransmitters, and nutrition. Hi, I'm Chris Masterjohn, and I have a PhD in nutritional sciences. I am not a medical doctor, and nothing contained in this episode may be construed as medical or nutritional advice of any kind or a substitute, therefore. This episode is meant purely as scientific education. If you wish to act on any ideas presented in this episode, please consult your physician first and never take anything herein as a reason to contradict medical advice. With that said, enjoy the episode. And thank you for doing this. You're welcome. Thank you. For I just uh, I just got your short email the other day and it titillated me. You were discussing um, anxiety, dopamine, and methylation. And I've been battling um, some pseudo-familial uh, anxiety, trying to get a handle on it. And I wonder if you could expound a bit, because I was really short. You just got you just got my interest and uh, left me hanging. Um, could, did, did you, you have, have any some... Did you have any specific questions, or did you want to me to kind of give the the overview? Well, um, probably the overview. I'm I'm trying to get a handle of the uh, over this anxiety without medicating. Uh, I was on sure. amlodipine for 2.5 migs for a few weeks. I got my pressure down without a problem, and then the other day it started going up again. And I, I they the doctors all seem to think that it's anxiety driven, and I have some problems sleeping at night. I wake up two or three times in the middle of the night, and my I'm one of these guys that thinks and thinks and thinks and thinks and thinks. And I'm wondering if it's a methylation problem, a dopamine problem. Okay. So um, there's a few trans neurotransmitters that are particularly relevant. Um, histamine is is a key anxiety neurotransmitter. So um, at very low levels, histamine causes you to be awake instead of asleep. At a little bit higher levels, histamine causes you to be alert. But at even higher levels, histamine causes you to be anxious. And at very high levels, histamine can induce a panic attack. And so you, you, know, you want histamine to be zero when you're sleeping and intermediate when you're awake at the level that causes alertness, um, but doesn't lead to uh, anxiety or panic. And the amount of histamine that's controlled uh, within a cell is controlled by methylation. So if you don't have methyl, if you don't have sufficient methylation of histamine, your histamine levels will be higher, and they might get higher into that anxiety level or the panic level. Another do- uh, another neurotransmitter that's relevant is dopamine, and I don't see dopamine as primarily actually causing baseline anxiety. I see dopamine primarily as um, influencing the balance between mental stability and mental fluidity. So when you're more mentally stable, um, and I don't mean that in a context of mental illness, I mean, uh, I mean, your emotional state, your psychological state, and your flow of ideas is um, more more focused and less e- less more difficult to change. That's what I mean by stable. And so when your mental state is more stable. Um, that can be beneficial because it can be good for focus on work or focus on academics, but it, it can also be um, counterproductive because if there's something that provokes anxiety, it may be harder to get rid of that thing. On the other hand, um, if you're more mentally fluid, that can be beneficial because you may uh, be better at multitasking or seamlessly uh, going between different uh, different tasks. Um and it also may be beneficial because if you get an anxiety producing thought, it may just go easy to get rid of it. Um, but on the other, on the other hand, it also um, makes you uh, predisposed to being distracted, um, to being impulsive and so on. So you want to be kind of in the middle where you're mentally stable enough to hold on to the ideas that are meaningful to you and are motivating to you, but uh, mentally fluid enough that if you get, an anxiety-provoking idea, uh, you can get rid of it and just say, I don't care about that. Go, okay. go away. Um, and so meth- enough methylation, uh, methylation generally predisposes you towards more mental fluidity. Um, and so if you have a tendency to ruminate or you have a tendency for an anxiety-producing thought to get stuck, then um, then you want more methylation to make you more mentally fluid. And so anxiety and on both of those fronts, you can imagine an interaction. So 
um, an anxiety producing thought may cause a spike in histamine and the histamine causes uh, a greater arousal that causes the physiological anxiety response. But because you're too mentally stable, you uh, are have great difficulty getting rid of the original provoking response. And not only that, but you have difficulty not paying attention to the increased state of arousal, which itself causes more anxiety. And so the increased availability of histamine might amplify the arousal response to the stimulus, whereas the poor methylation of dopamine will cause that state to get stuck and will cause a um, a, a potentially a feedback loop that um, could lead to, in the extreme result, a panic attack. So, I, you know, I've suffered from panic attacks before, and I no longer do. But the way that I see them is basically, um, you got anxious, and then you got anxious about the fact that you were anxious, and then you got anxious <laughs> about that. Sounds familiar. And and it uh, it's it spirals into um, ultimately the maximal state of anxiety possible. Um, and uh, so there, so that's that. And th that's the main way methylation is going to come into play. There are other things that are relevant. So um, uh, the relative balance between glutamate and GABA can be relevant. More glutamate is more stimulatory. More GABA is more calming. Um, glycine is another calming neurotransmitter that plays similar roles to GABA. So basically too much glutamate, not enough GABA and glycine may also uh, predisposed to anxiety. And that's why a lot of people are treated with a lot of the drugs that people are treated with for anxiety are acting on GABA receptors to induce that calming state. Um, and so that's relevant. That's, that's not so much about methylation. That's more about other things. Um, and then there's also other things as well, like cortisol levels and adrenaline levels can also um, impact anxiety, but through kind of different means. So uh, cortisol, if it raises your blood sugar too high, is going to create a glucose spike in the brain, which actually is the basis for how your glutamate levels rise because your brain makes glutamate from glucose. Um, so that can feed into that loop that way. Um, and then, you know, adrenaline could get your heart pounding and that can be more of a lower body peripheral state of arousal that causes feedback loops and the things in the brain that we talked about before. Um, but, you know, from that perspective, I would use methylation to act mostly on histamine and dopamine to promote less, uh, less of an excess arousal in histamine and more of a mentally fluid state in dopamine. Fantastic. Can I, a quick follow-up? Sure. Um, can we measure these, how easy is it to measure these neurotransmitters and, and then figure out the best course of action from that point and... Yeah, um, measurement of neurotransmitters is very difficult because um, no one's going to stick a needle in your brain and measure them where they matter. But you can get uh, some hints and make some inferences if you look at blood concentrations of histamine or urine concentrations of neurotransmitter metabolites. Um, so if you wanted two easy tests that kind of encapsulated everything. I would say the Genova methylation panel and the Genova ion panel plus 40 would give you more than enough to probe this stuff. They don't measure histamine levels, but they do look at, um, they do look at methylation and the methylation panel looks at methylation in great detail. And you can, I don't think you need to know the histamine levels in your brain. You can reason through it enough that if you have anxiety and you have signs of clear deficiencies in the methylation pathway, uh, I think that's adequate to act on supporting methylation um, in those ways. And then the Genova ion panel does have neurotransmitter metabolites, but they don't have histamine. They have uh, dopamine and norepinephrine metabolites and serotonin metabolites in the urine. Okay. Well, thank you for taking the time. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. Great talking to you. This episode was part of a Q&A for members of the CMJ Masterpass, a buyer's club with exclusive and massive discounts on your favorite premium foods and health products, including pasture-raised and wild meat and seafood, supplements, sleep accessories, water filters, phototherapy devices, and much more. As a bonus, you also get to participate in monthly private Zoom Q&As with me. You can join the Masterpass at chrismasterjohnphd.com slash masterpass and use the code q and A spelled out as Q-A-N-D-A, Q&A, for a 10% lifetime discount. 
From now through February or March, whatever it takes to get it done, I will be working full time on finishing my Vitamins and Minerals 101 book while reserving a portion of my time for my consulting clients. You can pre-order my book at chrismasterjohnphd.com slash book. In my consulting, I am neither a medical practitioner nor a coach. I serve as your data analyst and your strategist. I teach you scientific principles of health and wellness, help you analyze your data, and help brainstorm actionable strategies. You can sign up for a consultation at chrismasterjohnphd.com slash consultations. I will try to respond to comments here when I can, but my presence will be intermittent while I'm finishing my book. I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you in the next episode.